What's up, guys? Brett Okamoto from ESPN. I am joined uh, by one half of the main event of UFC Fight Night this weekend. It is Bantamweight contender Rob Font, who is in his uh, – he's in Vegas. He's over there in the uh, the residence inn here in Vegas, home away from home for all these fighters over the last year. Sure. And uh, getting ready for your uh, your first main event. Yeah, is there a different feeling coming in? Big fight, Cody Garbrandt, former champion, first time main event in the UFC? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's uh, it's a huge. It feels like a huge opportunity, huge uh, feel. But, um, I mean, obviously I was fortunate enough to kind of go through this with Calvin a couple of times, and uh, I kind of know what to expect. And, um, yeah, no, I'm excited. This is exactly what we want. This is exactly what we need to get close to that strap. And, um, yeah, no, you know, a guy like Cody Garbrandt is dangerous, and it's nothing but fireworks, you know, so I'm excited. Does this feel like it's come along at the uh, the appropriate time? I mean, you're a you're a veteran of the sport. You won a, a title, and you know the regional circuit before you made it to the UFC. But to get in, you know, we ask this a lot of guys when it's their first main event. Do you feel like this has been an appropriate time frame? Yeah, do like I do. Been, yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. You know, um, you know, I think I, I you know, three out. Obviously, you know, you you you, um, you learn more off of your losses. So I think those help. Um, you know, being around Calvin, seeing it, I think definitely helped. Um, I think mentally, physically, is I'm in a good spot right now, and, and uh, probably wouldn't have dealt with it as well back in like 2015, 2016. So I definitely think I'm, you know, I, I'm in a good spot, and this is the right time to main event and fight a guy like Cody Garbrandt. You know, it's interesting to me coming off of last week where Charles Oliveira was headlining the card, and I just thought to myself, like, man, this guy's it's going to be his 28th pro fight. Um, we know of him, of course, and we've seen his highlights. We know about his fighting career, but we don't know a whole lot, it felt like, about the man himself. And I kind of feel like that's the same thing with you. I mean, we know that uh, New England cartel, Rob Font's exciting. You know, he's been a, a staple in the Spanamweight division. But I didn't know a whole lot about your story, and I started to kind of look back on it. And this whole journey in MMA started uh, in a pizza delivery car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I was uh, I was in Tampa, Florida, uh, delivering pizzas. And I loosely knew what MMA was in UFC, uh, you know, because of guys like Chuck Liddell, but I didn't really watch it. Um, I was more of a kind of a boxing fan for as far as combat sports and um, didn't know what jiu-jitsu was. I knew obviously what college wrestling, high school wrestling was. Um, but then I, I delivered to a, uh, to a house. They were in there doing jiu-jitsu and like, you know, they kind of broke it down to me what they were doing and what UFC was at that time. I believe it was, it was uh, George St. Pierre fighting BJ Penn. I think that's what they were watching. And um, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And, 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 and um, you know, they broke it down. They told me what school they went to. Um, all the, all this is going on. I'm supposed to be delivering pizzas too. So I'm like probably late for the next one. And um, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. They, they told me where they, what school they went to. I looked it up. Um, uh, sort of, you know, you know, I went down the rap hole, what Gracie Jisoo was, what, Muay Thai was how they blend it um and then I just it just kind of took over man I just got addicted it was I I, I uh you know I'm sitting there watching fight quests I'm YouTube and everything I'm, I'm trying to like I'm just like throwing myself into a big big pool of MMA and, and and um and that was like again Saturday I did that probably Sunday Monday and I went to the gym probably like on that Thursday Friday and it was it I signed up right there for the six-month trial um and I was hooked um I would always, 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 always mess around with my friends and, and it was slap box. And at that time, Jorge Masvidal was doing all the, you know, the street fights out in, in Miami. And we didn't take it that far, but we would, you know, grab, we went and got the, uh, the, the, the cheap Everlast blue gloves and we'd be in the backyard just going at it, not knowing what we we're doing. Um, and then it was just, I just, I was just the only one that kept going with it. It was, um, you know, I knew, I knew, um, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I felt like, I did, if that made sense, you know, then, and then once I got into the gym, um, quickly learned, I didn't know nothing. And then, um, I just kept going and you know, that was it. I got addicted and it was like, I, I, I think I could do this. I, I see myself doing this. I'm like, I like honestly fell in love with it. And, and yeah, that was it. And then, uh, How old yeah, and then I was 21, just had turned 21. Wasn't really doing much, kind of partying too much, pretending like I was going to go back to school, but really wasn't really passionate about it. And then, um, and then, uh, and then I started really watching like the WEC because it's free. Um, you know, felt, started watching guys and like Uriah and Carlos Condit and uh, uh, Ronnie Yaya, all those guys. Um, and then um, I was uh, at the time my uh, my girlfriend was in Boston and I was in Florida, and 
the tap out show was on in um in uh it was a guy named Mike Campbell. He was fighting out of City of Thong. Um and um, I saw that. I was actually on the phone. I'm like, hold on, let me call you back. Cause I was just about to go visit her. And um I was like, wait, this is this is kind of like this is getting crazy because it's, it's making it's like it's like it's like kind of like falling into place. And then I was like, all right, and I, I found out who Mark Delagrati was, who Kenny Florian was, Marcus Davis, all those guys. And then I, and I flew out there, visit visited her. The thing it was like a week and I, I took two classes there and in Florida, I was at a Jiu-Jitsu school, but in, obviously in Boston, it was more of a Muay Thai school. And I think, I think I fell in love. Then I kind of fell more in love with the Muay Thai, and I was like, all right, this is it. I think I could do it. Um, moved up to Boston. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have, uh, you know, Catherine. Uh, just kind of just like, listen, if you want to do this, don't worry about working. Don't worry about going back to school. Just, just train. And 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 I kind of got that. My, it was kind of like my break, and you know, I, all I would do was eat, sleep, and train for like the first two years and I just I think um from there just again I was all right I did the two years and then we took my uh, amateur uh fight I lost my amateur fight and it was like it just drove me to even want to do it even more you know and then um um yeah and then that was it and it was funny because at that time I'm sitting there googling everybody and Calvin Cater was the man out there he was just like he was just doing his thing and, and I was like still young-minded thing all right I got to beat the big guy in the, you know in, in the schoolyard like, I, I want to fight Calvin I want to fight Calvin I want to fight Calvin and then um and then um as we got closer to that opportunity to fight him uh, uh my managers Tyson and my coach he was like listen we're not fighting this guy He's, there's no reason to fight him you know um, you guys are not going to get paid um enough money to fight um you're a 35 anyway he's a 45 you need to go down if anything we need to link up and train and um it was mm -hmm. the smartest decision I ever made or he ever made and I and yeah and been going at it ever since I love that when you sort of found the sport at 21 had you been an athlete up to that point and had you done any combat sports at all up to that point? um no combat sports I you know I was younger my, my, my mom put me in a couple of taekwondo classes uh played played baseball um a little bit um but nothing too crazy I, I would dabble here and there play a lot of football basketball outside but wasn't like a serious athlete um I think I, I I think my curiosity to try everything was there. I was I was a kid that would, you know, for six months I was trying to be a skater, and then next thing was BMX, and then next thing was soccer. You know, so I was always that guy that kind of would try anything and wasn't afraid to look stupid and fail. Um, and now it's golf and MMA, you know. So I was kind of like one of those things where I was like I was willing to try, but this one this was different. It just stuck. It just felt right, and it just really was a love and addiction for it. What did like the people around you and like the people in your life say that when you're, you're 21 years old and you rolled up, delivered a pizza and fell in love with, with mixed martial arts and you're like, all right, this is going to be my career now. Like, I'm sure at the time that sounded like Rob, what crazy, that, like that ain't going to yeah, happen. I, I, like, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even like when I told my father about it, he's like, yo, well, that's cool. You, you ever thought about maybe going to the army then or, or maybe this? I'm like, no, I just told you I'm going to do this. And he's like, you know, it, it, it's tough though. Cause it's, it's, you know, it's like, if I just told you right now, oh, you know, you know, I'm not going to fight. I think I'm gonna become a rapper now. You know, you're like, bro, like, what are you talking about? You got a career. Like it, that, that's what it was, you know? And, and, uh, you know, honestly, the only person I believe was my boy, Miguel, that like I, I, my roommate at the time. And then Catherine, my girlfriend, I was like, listen, let's do this. Like, and they didn't even know what they was. They didn't even know what they were watching. They just trusted me and saw how passionate I was. But it took a while for my mom to kind of come along. Uh, brother and sister were like, yeah, this kid's crazy. He's probably just going to do this for six months and do something else. Because that's, well, that was, that's what I did, you know. And yeah, I just, I'm talking about, to the, I was so addicted to the point where I, from like 2009 to probably like 2012, I didn't watch baseball, football. It was, I didn't, I wasn't up to date. Like I was obviously watch ESPN here and there, but I wouldn't watch it. You know, I wouldn't watch the football game. I wouldn't play on the Xbox. It was just just martial arts. It was to the point where I think I overdid it to the point where I had to like try to find new activities and to kind of not, you know, be in it too much and and I had to force myself to get back to watching baseball and basketball and and and, and, and golf and stuff like that. And um so yeah, it was just it was and then once they saw that part, like, all right, this kid's he's serious about it. Like he really wants this and then then that's when you know everybody kind of got jumped on board and and really got behind me with it. You don't stay in touch with the guys that were doing it in the garage when you drove over the pizza, do you? Ah, uh, that's fucked. I, I wish I did. I, um, I actually didn't go to the school they recommended. I, I, I uh, Googled it, and I, I actually found the 
I don't know if you remember Matt Arroyo. He fought in the Ultimate Fighter. At, uh, I forgot what season was, but it was him. This guy named Monster uh, Lobster, um, Alan Baruby. They were on the show at the time. Um, at the time, around that time, and I kind of went to their school. They were the bigger gym in that area. So, um, but yeah, I never. I probably tried to try to find them a little, but I never really got back to it. Um, get to really uh, contact those guys and, and and thank them really. But uh, I'm sure I'm, I should try a little harder. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, it really is a fantastic story, and it also is. Um, I just wonder throughout like the course of your career, because then things happened really fast. You know, you were you were in the UFC within three years. And uh, I look, I look at, at your UFC record, and um, you know, sorry to bring up some of the the the, the ones that didn't go your way, yeah. but you know, when you fought John Lineker, he had about three times as many professional fights as you did. When you fought Pedro Munoz, you know, you guys had about the same number of fights, but he was a BJJ guy who had done it his whole life. And then yeah. you fought a Sun Sal, he had twice as many fights as you. So, yeah. like when you went into those fights, what, what 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 was that like? Did you did you were you confident? Did you feel like you were at an, an experience disadvantage? What, what were those fights in like? The, in the Lineker fight, I, I think I was overconfident. I, I didn't I, I didn't realize what I was getting myself into, if that made sense. Like, I didn't, like, I was like, oh, just another fight. But but it was like the first time really traveling, first time, you know, fighting. For, they, they had us in a soccer stadium. It, it was huge. It was packed, too. And it was like, oh, that's no big deal. It just ended up fighting, and I was like, no, no, this is different. This is a different, you know, I wasn't, I, don't know, I think mentally I wasn't there for it. Uh, the Munoz fight, it was just, I, I panicked, you know, I panicked, and and he, he he rocked me, and I shot in, and it was like, you know, you do that with Munoz, he's, he's choking you, you know, and then uh, the Sansa fight was more of like, I felt young, you know, I felt like he was just in the, he was always in a better position, he was, he just, he was felt wiser, and he just, he just, he, he just knew how to win the fight, you know, I didn't, I don't, I don't I didn't, I was trying to go in and knock him out. He was in there strategizing to win the fight. And, you know, and I learned all from all those, uh, all those um, fights. And, um, you know, I think those definitely prepped me for, for this main event, you know? Yeah. I imagine that that's, that almost has to give you kind of uh, confidence that, you know, some yeah. guys like they look back on their losses and they're like, man, I just wasn't as good as that guy or, or whatever the case is, but you, you're able to look back and be like, man, like those guys, there's reasons why I lost those fights. I guess, like, is that yeah. kind of what you're looking? At? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do believe. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that they're, you know, I've been losing nothing but Brazilians. Uh, yeah. in, in Brazil, I kind of like we joke about it, like Tom Brady can't win in, in Miami, and I can't win in, in Brazil. But uh, it's a short Brazilians, the hard matchups for me. But uh, you know, I, I got through it, Marais, got through it, with Thomas Almeida. But uh, yeah, it was one of those things. Like mentally, I was not there for Lineker. Uh, I, I can't even watch that. I get sick watching it. And then, um, yeah, the learning how to obviously if, if, if I get rocked and, 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 and hurt or whatever, not to panic too much. And that's, how, that's what I learned from the Munoz fight. And then, and then yeah, just I think uh, the maturity uh, of Asan Sal and, and, and his experience and, and, and him just always being in a better position at, in that fight was uh, it, it was clear. Like, all right, it's, it's, there's more than just going there and fighting. And there's more than just trying to knock people out. And you know, again, again, like I said, like it was like all learning because like, yeah, I, de I definitely got it was got into the UFC pretty quick and 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 I went from fighting Joey Gomez was basically and no offense to him was a uh, you know local fighter he took that short on fight uh, he took that fight on short notice to fight Lineker in Brazil in front of forty thousand people mm -hmm. in a soccer stadium and I was just like wait a minute and like to the point where when we were going to the arena the whole they shut the block down like the whole thing was shaking it was like it was crazy and like as I got there I was like wait this is different and like it just it just wasn't there I didn't click mentally and but I needed that I think you know obviously it's corny to say and all that and, but I really did need like let them know like wait you gotta like prep a little different you gotta go in there mentally a little different you gotta like have a little more trust in your team more and, and, and it's not just about knocking people out obviously you know you, know, you want to knock people out and, and put on the show and, and and collect the bonuses and all that but it's there's, there's a lot more strategy to, to it than just going there and hit them you know so um you know i think all those 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 lessons and and all the up and downs and obviously the injuries and all that and, and i think i think you know winning two losing one winning two losing one and and you know not being assistant is, you know, this is the reason why most people don't know who I am. And, and as you know, I've been, I have been in since 2014, but I don't have that name in. I think that plays into it. Um, obviously the injuries and being sidelined. And, and, and I believe after the, after the Pettis fight, it was, it was just hard to find a fight. It just didn't line up. 
And then when I finally got the uh, the Ricky Simone fight, um, I got injured in that fight. So then I had to so wait another year. And then fought Marais, we uh we won that. And then, you know, now we're here. And uh, I think this is kind of like, you know, my time to kind of get out there. Um, I guess my coming out party, go out there and, and put on a show and, and beating a guy like Cody Garbrand, that's a, you know, a former champ, huge name, uh, will help me um, obviously get my name out there and then get me a, definitely one step closer to that belt. You know, real quick, just on um, sort of Calvin, I, was did you guys need to recalibrate at all after that? Because it just felt like, you know, New England cartel, everything was going great. It's like you guys are taking over the world. And um, and then, you know, I think everybody has faith that, you know, Calvin will come back. He'll still look great. He's still obviously a very, very highly ranked featherweight. But um, to have kind of like that hot streak and that momentum be abrupted in the way, manner in which it did in Fight Island, like what did you guys, what are some of the conversations you guys had, you know, sort of like to, to recalibrate after that? Um, yeah, so, you know, it's all mental, you know, it's, it's mental for him, you know, um, you know, you know, fighting a guy like Max, it, it, it's, you know, fighting the best in the world and it, it's, it's tough, you know, um, he, um, you know, I think, and then at that thing, Max, he's had a, he's had a great night instead of having, you know, um, um, I think obviously Calvin had an off night and then, and then Max having a great night and, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's been, you know, just, just trying to stay, stay stay positive and, and, and just get back to work, you know, with, 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 uh, with, with uh, you know, just techniques and getting better and, and defensively, offensively, and um, just mixing it up a little bit more, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I talked to a lot of people about uh, the fight, the matchup this weekend with Cody. And a lot of, a lot of people say like, you know, obviously Cody's tough, Cody's tough. Um, he's had a problem with fighting emotional. And so it's, it seems like that's kind of the, the storyline on Cody, you know, like, like there's, of course, there's a lot that goes into fighting Cody Garbrandt, but one thing that just consist consistently gets brought up is that he fights emotional and then it's cost him at certain times. Do you take that into account as, as an opponent? Like, do you, do you look for an opportunity to make him emotional? Like, does that come into the game plan at all? I, I do. I do. I do. Um, I, I think uh, I'm not going to do it more. I'm not going to try to make him emotional with like talking or, or showing off in the ring. Mm -hmm. I think I'll, uh, my, my way, I'm going to, I want to frustrate him with my jab and frustrate him and get him to kind of, you know, uh, get emotional and just try to wing stuff like he did with, uh, you know, Pedro Munoz, you know, um, but, you know, um, you know, I think, you know, I think he learned from that. Um, you saw the maturity in, in the last fight with the Sansa fight. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the idea, the, the goal is to, uh, to frustrate him with, with the skill set and, and, and the game plan, but, um, also, if he doesn't, you know, to kind of pick my part and 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 and, and go the twenty whole twenty five if I, if I need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last thing for you, how do you see the rest of this year going? I mean, we were supposed to get TJ and Colt and uh, Sanhagen uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, that fight's now, you know, being postponed a little bit, and then we still don't have a date on uh, Aljamain and Piotr. But uh, you win this fight against a former champion. How do you see like uh, the rest of the year playing out? One hundred thirty five pounds. Yeah, I mean, you know, I see if I go out there put on a great performance, finish Cody Garbrandt. Um, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm in that mix, and I'm, I'm in that that title uh, talk for sure. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, I do believe I'm, like, two behind, though. I think, um, you know, uh, Corey, he's, he's on fire right now, and then that kid's killing it. Um, and then, they obviously, have TJ, the, the, the ex-champ, um, who technically didn't lose the 35 belt. So, um, you know, depending on how that fight plays out, um, I, I think I'm one behind. So um, yeah, obviously we got to have uh, um, the championship uh, rematch, see how that plays out. Um, and then Corey and, and TJ go at it. Um, and then, you know, uh, so I think I'm going to be sitting for a little bit, basically, you know, I think I'll be sitting for a little bit until see how that plays out. And, um, but again, you know, injuries happen. You never know. Um, you never know how it goes. I could, I, I, it could be, my next fight could be for the belt, but I do think I'm too behind for sure. Hmm. Well, even if that's the case, man, you're in a good spot in this 135 pound division and uh, really looking forward to the, this main event against Cody Garbrandt on Saturday, man. Thank you for the time, Rob. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.